Well, there was one thing that happened last week, and it and it go to every it went to everyone piling on, and that was that two of our former UK staff they only worked for us for three or four months. Uh, and we discovered that little things, they were stealing money here and there and making strange demands, and we knew it wasn't working, so we fired them. Sorry, it happens sometimes in business. But then they started making extortion demands, and I flew out to meet them and say, there's no way we're paying, and duh, obviously they recorded me, took my words out of context when I said, I'm not paying you hush money. Well, they made it look like I was one who suggested it. They did an extortion video that they rolled out last week right in the middle of things. Um, I wish I knew a little bit more about these guys before I hired them. I wish, for example, our background check had picked up this video about Kalen Robertson. And you can actually see George John in there too, though he's sort of in disguise. Take a look. When I was younger, and I used to just post regular things, I used to look up to other people who were sort of at the top of this little social hierarchy. So they just seemed to be this golden community of people on the internet who had this sort of fame, and I really wanted to be a part of it. And what better way to get thousands of followers on Facebook than to borrow thousands of pounds so that you can start in your very own online series? The way that I paid for all of the hotels and all the like luxury lifestyle stuff was um, it was just through like other people's money, through credit card companies and loans and payday loans and stuff like that. Just so we're clear, exactly how much did you blow getting famous on Facebook? Um, now I'm in like five thousand pounds debt. Five thousand pounds isn't really that much anyway. Just so you know, in case you didn't realize that that was a little reality show about this scammer named Kalen Robertson, and we hired him, and my fault for that, and my fault for going to try and deal with him. My point is, this same guy, Kalen Robertson, <laughs> then did a video claiming that we were the scammers, when in fact it was just because we didn't pay him. I don't know if you've seen it, but a lot of people have been asking me about this video by Kalen last week. Now, do you remember that Israel trip that Rebel crowdfunded for? The one that took place at the same time that Lauren Southern went independent? It's not a coincidence. It actually turns out that Rebel crowdfunded more than enough money to cover the costs of that trip, and yet they still demanded she make a video asking for more. Of course, Lauren refused, and after raising concerns about the ethics of lying for the money that they didn't need, she was unceremoniously fired and threatened with legal action if she ever spoke out about it. That's right, she didn't leave. She was fired. Now, of course, Kaylin and George were only with us for a few months. They never saw any of our accounting. They weren't briefed on our finances whatsoever. They were just doing video work in the UK. So it's, it's laughable, it's gossip, it's slander, it's the, it's the extortion. But enough people said, well, Ezra, will you release your crowdfunding statistics? I mean, we're a private company here at The Rebel, uh, but we do ask for public support for our campaigns, whether it's, uh, you know, to go on a trip somewhere to cover journalism, whether it's a capital campaign, like to build our app. Sometimes we raise funds for genuine charities, like um, uh, to rebuild Fort McMurray. And I thought about it, and I thought, you know what? Why don't we just do it? Why don't we just release our accounting because I'm actually extremely proud of it. And it took this crisis to make me think, well, yeah, why am I keeping it a secret? And so we've decided to do it. And on our website, you can go to therebel.media slash trust and see the accounting for our crowdfunding. And joining me now in studio is someone whose name you might know v by emails he sends out every week, my friend Eitan Gilbor. You are in charge of crowdfunding for The Rebel. Yeah, and it's a pleasure doing it <laughs> and happy to stand with uh, the crowdfunding that we do. Yeah, I mean, some people say, oh, you ask your viewers for money. Yeah, we're not the CBC. We don't take it from their taxes by force. No one has to give to our crowdfunding campaigns. They do it because they like it. I'm very proud of it. And obviously, if people give us their email, we're going to email them. And if we ask for money, they don't have to give. The idea that crowdfunding is somehow bad is, is sort of like opposite land to me. Government money for media is bad. And I think even taking money from like a Rogers or a Shaw that is an extremely regulated super corporation, I don't think those journalists are free. Tell me um, how you deal with, or I, I want to get into the crowdfunding in just a second because it's extremely exciting. We're sure. going to re release it. But on a, a, on a given basis, you probably talk to 20, 30, 40 of our donors and subscribers. What, what's that like? I mean, our donors are great people, patriots, and can't thank them enough for their support. 
Um, but they're just people who want to hear the other side of the story, who just want to support us in our mission to, uh, to, to fill the market where there is no conservative journalism for us to sort of provide that. Yeah. And people want to support that. So we have very many uh, causes that people contribute to. And it's always a pleasure dealing with them and thank them for their donations. All right, let's just jump into the numbers because I bet a lot of people want to see it. Let's start with the gifts that we give to third parties. Now, most of our crowdfunding is to keep the rebel going. And we say that it's for apps. It's for when we sent Sheila Gunn Reid to Morocco to cover the UN conference. It's for security. Uh, it's for our public l uh, legal fights against bullies. But we actually do, well, in the last year, almost a, almost a million dollars of fundraising for third-party charities. Um, you've got some printouts here. We'll show them on the screen. Tell me about how we do crowdfunding for bona fide charities. I'm not talking about for our company. Our company's not a charity. How do we raise funds for, say, um, Professor Jordan Peterson's research or for Rebuild Fort Mac or for Save the Christians, the Iraqi genocide funder? Tell me how we do that. Yeah, I mean, first off, that's, those are some of the causes that I'm uh, most passionate about and most happy that we do is all these uh, very charitable causes that we take. Um, we use a crowdfunding site, an external one, just so everything is very above the board and people can see um, everything that comes in uh, uh, called Indiegogo. And sometimes we use an affiliate of Indiegogo called Generosity. Um, and we launch our campaigns through there and we ask people to donate. So Professor Peterson was an example of one where he was uh, denied funding for the first time in his career. Um, we suspect for sort of dubious causes. And we said, you know what? No problem. We're going to fund your research, Professor yeah. Peterson. That was censorship of him. It was so obvious. So we raised, we've got the stats here, $195,000 and $195,230. Now, Indiegogo or Generosity.com, they take a very small handling fee. That's themselves. But we don't take any funds whatsoever from those third-party charity drops, do we? No, not at all. Um, absolutely. Indiegogo takes a small sort of uh, fee for processing, just like everyone else, and they take a little cut for themselves. Generosity uh, is great, and they just do the processing fee, but you have to do it in U.S. dollars. So sometimes we've gone with Indiegogo yeah. or Canadian. And, you know. So what's the grand total that we've raised between the Spear Kids Fund, which I have to say is my favorite. Mm -hmm. um, professor Peterson, that was good, but it's sort of obscure. I mean, a professor's research, not everyone says, yeah, that's a charity for me, but a lot of people loved it because they love him. He's so courageous. Um, Rebuild Fort Mac, I mean, it's, it's, it's been more than a year now, but that's, that was a very special one for sure. me. Sure, Premier Notley. Yeah, Premier Notley. Yeah. If Rachel Notley herself is going to say thank you to me, you, you know she didn't do that easily. And then we have one that's still ongoing now, SaveTheChristians.com. Just tell me the top line. How, how much is the total number of dollars that Rebel viewers have raised that we have given to third-party charities? Sure. It's, I'm very proud to say, $853,778 so far. All right. So that's the charity stuff. Most of what we do here at the Rebel is not charitable. I mean, it's, it's business, it's politics, it's journalism. The charity stuff we have on those external sites, maximum transparency, 100% of the net proceeds goes to the bona fide charities. But what we do here, people love it because they don't get it anywhere else. When we, for example, I remember when I flew to interview Geert Wilders, the Dutch politician, mm -hmm. we crowdfunded the ticket, the plane tickets. We crowdfunded the tickets for Sheila to go to the UN Global Warming Convention. So we do that through crowdfunding. I call those business expenses. Some people might love them like a charity. They're not charity, but uh, let's just end the suspense. Tell me, how much has the Rebel, in the last fiscal year of our company, crowdfunded in total for everything, whether it was building the new app, building equipment, even office furniture, um, hiring students, stuff that's not outward charity, like inward businessy stuff, Give me the total number. I mean, sure. I'm bragging now. We're bragging now. Sure. Go ahead. Should we do a drum roll? Yeah. One million five hundred forty-three thousand one hundred sixty-two dollars and thirteen cents. Well, that's amazing. Okay. And uh, every single one of those people did it voluntarily. No one has to donate to the rebel. Tell me why. I mean, you talked to hundreds. You talked to thousands of people over the course of time. What is the number one reason that someone would voluntarily give money? to watch a video that they could get for free. Like when I went to interview here at Vilders, just for that one example, that video was for free on the internet. 
So no one had to give money, but we had probably 200 people chip in to cover that trip. I don't remember exactly. Why would someone pay for that trip if they could watch it for free? I mean, it's a great question. And my job here, my official title is community and campaign manager. So I talk to these people pretty often. Uh, it's a large part of my job is knowing that. And the answer is very simple that they support our journalistic mission. Our mission at The Rebel is to show the other side of the story, mm -hmm. is to report on the things that the mainstream media refuses to. And we're doing that. Yeah. And people realize that without us, there wouldn't be opposition to so many different things. M103, carbon tax, none of those issues would be popular because the, everyone else, especially in Canada, they're left wing, they're the mainstream media. And people realize that when the Sun News Network died, there needed to be someone to tell that other side of the story. And that's us. And people want to support our mission. Yeah. Well, I remember the email I wrote announcing that I was going to talk to Kurt Wilders. And I said, the CBC would either ignore him mm -hmm. Or if they interviewed him, it would be an attack, a gotcha. And I think everyone knew that was true. And everyone wanted to say, well, can we have a real interview with Kurt Wilders so we actually learn what he has to say rather than just how bad the CBC hates him? Now, let's do one more thing. Let's go through the apportioning of the expenses. So we raised $1.54 million in the last fiscal year of the company for crowdfunding internally. That's different from the outward charity stuff. Give us a breakdown of some of the line items there. Obviously, by far, the biggest expense we have here is journalists. Uh, web editors, producers, uh, video editors, um, student journalists. We hired some right out of school. That's so much yeah. fun. Uh, but also other journalists, too, and, and travel. Give me some of the other expenses. Sure. I mean, some of the expenses. So that large one that we're talking about is over a million uh, point two. Um, but then there's also just sort of... Uh, our studio build, that was $20,000. In the last fiscal year. I mean, yeah. we've, we've had other, like I remember when we started oh, the sure. Rebel, but, but this is for the last 12 months. Keep going. Sure, we also have the uh, lawyers. Unfortunately, that's a large part of this business now. Well, uh, but those are lawyers for our campaigns. Like, for right. example, Justice for Chelsea in the UK. A lot of lawyers there. Um, in Canada, I mean, I remember, this is probably in an earlier fiscal year, we hired lawyers for the Christian pastor in downtown Toronto that the police charged him for busking. Hiring lawyers is something we do so often, but it's because our side often doesn't have the free ACLU lawyers to fight for them. So um, we've hired, for example... Um, John Carpe. John Carpe, yeah, yeah. One of my favorite freedom lawyers. Keep going. Give us one sure. more example. I mean, People can look at these. These are all on our website at therebel.media slash trust. But give us one more example. Sure. I mean, that was 165000 spent. But another example of something that we've done is um, just on equipment, for example. We've had to spend over $20,000 yeah. in the past year. Well, there you go. I have to tell you, I mean, we started this company two and a half years ago. And it's a private company, not a dime of government money. No individual donor to the company greater than 2%. What's the average gift? You probably know that. I, is it, it's about $68? So tell me if uh, I'm... It's a bit higher than that. It's around $78 right $78. now. $78. Yeah. Well, there you go. The average donor, less than $100. I, I guess I haven't checked in a while. 78 bucks. That's who our people are. And I guess there was no reason to keep this private other than the company's not a public company. We're, but when these critics said, where's the money? Where's the money? And they were piling on. I thought, why won't I just disclose this? By the way, our accounting firm is one of the most reputable accounting firms in Canada. It's not some mom and pop shop. It's Zeifman's and Company, a uh, reputable firm, very large independent firm. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm not shy about this. I'm extremely proud of it. And I, uh, I, mean, I don't want to brag about it because mm. it's not me. It's our people. But, I mean, people who watch the show all the time, they know this because we're always talking about it. Sometimes we have pictures of the checks that we hand. Uh, for example, um, I was just talking to Tommy Robinson, and in a couple of weeks he's going to go hand a check on the Thank Knox campaign for veterans. So, I mean, sometimes we love to deliver checks. Sometimes we just do it. It's, it I have to tell you, it's one of my favorite parts about The Rebel. Last word to you, Aitan. Yeah, I mean, it's really one of my favorite things that we do, too, to show people that, hey, this is a problem. Here's what we're going to do about it. And then to deliver, mm -hmm. what a great thing to show. Uh, and we can only thank our audience for their gener generous support on that. You know, there's one more thing I want to answer, because this was in the, the criticism video that these disgruntled former staffers made. It's just a very small point. Um, 
And I just know you can nail it because they had no clue they were trading in gossip. And I know our supporters don't believe it, but I just want you to nail it. They said that in the case of the trip we did to Israel, Lauren Southern allegedly refused to fundraise for the trip because we had already <laughs> raised more than enough money. Now, by the way, our pay it forward um, terms of service means if we raise more than we need to for a particular campaign, we either pay the overhead or pay for similar campaigns. That's on the internal stuff. But give us the facts. When you looked into our database and the day that Lauren Southern was fired, according to these lads in the UK, they claimed we had already fundraised for the trip. Why don't you just show that? And I want you to show on the screen the stats. Sure. How much did we raise, actually? So it was March 2nd when mm -hmm. Lauren uh, left the Rebel. and. At that point in time, according, um, we had only raised just over $2,000 for Rebel Israel. So I think it was $2,160.08. Yeah. Um, and they, Kaylin made this ridiculous claim that we had already fundraised the entire Israel trip, and Lauren uh, couldn't stand the idea of having to fundraise for it. So she uh, refused and then was fired. And like, I'm not involved in those sort of HR things, but I know that it's my job to raise money. And when yeah. I heard that, I thought, that's absolute nonsense. Yeah. Uh, Kaylin obviously doesn't know our accounting. Yeah. Um, you know, that trip, I think we said it was $5,000 uh, per reporter. We sent four people and two cameramen. Yeah. So that's 30000 I understand uh, our expenses actually even exceeded that. You know, <laughs> that day we had $2,000. It's, yeah. just, it's just a lie. Yeah. I mean, listen, we can't answer every single gossipy rumor out there. But what we can do is put these... Uh, expenses and revenues on the website. Mm -hmm. We are, uh, our accounting firm is one of the most reputable accounting firms in the country, but really it comes down to people can see what we do every day. They can see us talk to the lawyers we hire to fight for Chelsea, to fight for John Fletcher. They can see when Gareth Knox gets fitted for his fancy wheelchair. In Canada, they can see when we fly our team somewhere, whether it was, you know, flying Lauren Southern herself to the Milwaukee riots. Sure. I mean, um, pretty quickly, if you're in a campaign and you don't see the bill billboards, how many billboards have we would, we done? Kathleen Wynne billboard, we did. What a uh, billboard. You know, we, did, we did so <laughs> many billboards, sure. it's unbelievable. So, I mean, it's sort of ridiculous to say, where is it going? People can see, but now they can see the expenses. Hey, Tan, appreciate you coming forward and and disclosing these numbers. I'm very proud of it. Do you have anything else to say to Rebel viewers who might have felt wobbled by the last week? Do you, do you, well, hey, you're running our campaign, standwiththerebel.com. Let's see how that does. Yeah, I mean, you know, make sure to sign up at standwiththerebel.com. If you want to see us live, it's all based on you guys. And I think we're going to exceed expectations and come back stronger than ever. I think so. I think the media party counts us out too early. Hey, Town Gilboard, thank you for your help. Thanks for disclosing something that I don't think any other media company in Canada discloses. CBC, which is owned by taxpayers, is not this candid with their accounting. I don't know any other private company that would, but we're different. We live on the trust of our viewers, and I think that trust is strong. Thanks for being an important part of that. Hey, if you like that, sign up for my show every day. Click on the screen to subscribe.